huge thank you to Dot, who asked what kind of paper to use for book pages. So thank you, Dot. Let's talk about some paper today. So this is a short list of basic types of paper stock that you may come across in book binding. Of course, this isn't by no means an exhaustive list. It's just some of the common ones that you may, you may find. All right, so first off, we're gonna talk about standard copy paper. And this is what you would find at any local big box store, a grocery store even, any of the office supply stores. Basically, this is what you put in your printer to print off random whatever paper. The, the weights will vary between 20 and 24 pounds generally. The 20 pound, of course, is going to be the lightest, thinnest stock, and then the 24 pound will be a nicer quality, a thicker quality paper. This kind of paper is great for notebooks or planners, maybe little books for just writing down grocery lists or that kind of thing. Next up, let's talk about parchment paper. And we are not talking about the traditional old parchment paper, the, the real deal that was made hundreds of years ago. This is the modern facsimile and it has an aged texture to it that's supposed to be similar to an old type of parchment paper. So generally, parchment paper will come in the 24 pound range, and it comes in several different colors as well. And so does your, so does your copy paper. The copy paper can come in lots of different colors too. Uh, the, the parchment will come in anywhere from an off-white to an ivory to a cream to a copper. They have pale greens and blues, all kinds of wonderful colors for you to choose from. Uh, what this is nice for is this will be more um, if you wanted to make a formal kind of book, perhaps a wedding guest book or a visitor's log book. Perhaps you're going to be giving a, away a book as a gift and you want it to have some really nice paper on the inside and not just copy paper. Perhaps you would go with a parchment. There are different companies that sell parchment. Some of my favorite is Southmore and because they come, it comes in all ranges of colors. You can find that at Office Depot or sometimes Staples, definitely on Amazon. It is a good all round parchment paper. Great for writing and journaling, that kind of thing. How about handmade paper? Now handmade paper is going to vary greatly depending on the maker or if it is a commercially mass-produced handmade paper. <laughs> so it could be anywhere as thin as a copy paper or it can be as thick as watercolor paper. So that's why I said your mileage may vary on that. It can come with fragments of plants and flowers and different kinds of fibers sometimes even glitter and that kind of thing you can find. It is beautiful to look at. It is not always great to write on because of the bumpy texture. What this is great for, however, is if you are making a book and you wanna separate the book into different sections, this could be a cover sheet for different sections or different seg signatures. You could fold it in half and bind it around a signature, label it with the section, it's lovely, it's beautiful in a wedding guest book. You could mark off sections for different aspects of the day, maybe notes that the bride took, maybe the groom took some notes. Perhaps it was also used as a guest book at the wedding and people wanted to write their name. Maybe there's a section for addresses and phone numbers, that kind of thing. Beautiful way to separate signatures if you need to. You can bind a whole book in handmade paper um, it's gorgeous. You can, some of it is even sturdy enough where you can attach memorabilia photographs and that kind of thing without stretching it or pulling on it or tearing it. It sure is fun to work with. So I hope you give handmade paper a try. All right, let's talk about some heavier paper. And this is going to be 
like sketch paper. Now this is a super, super cheap kids drawing sketching paper. It's made out of a real heavy fibered manila color and it is not super smooth. It's actually fairly, fairly textured. This is very, very inexpensive. I think you can get big, huge honking pads of this for just a couple of bucks. However, it is great for kids. <laughs> it won't stand up to watercolors very well, especially if your kid uses a lot of water. It may hold up to markers as long as they're not the real thick, heavy ones that bleed as soon as you put them down on paper, but more of the fine tipped markers, it should work out fine. But it's great for pencils and colored pencils and just regular pens, that kind of thing. Crayons, kids love it for that kind of stuff. So um, the, the sketch paper, um, and I can also add in there like lightweight construction. Not the heavy, heavy weight construction. Uh, we're talking all this sketch paper is in the 50 to 65 pound range, perhaps. Here is another, another pad of just, it's called a scribble pad for kids, but it's also lovely to put in for adults. Adults need scribble pads too. So um, this one is more of a newsprint color. And like I said, in a 50 to 65 pound range. And great for kids, notebooks, art journals, sketchbooks, scribble pads, that kind of thing. Very inexpensive and great to put together little gifts for kids or, or adults who just like to doodle and scribble and sketch. Now we're gonna get into the heavier papers and these are your drawing papers, your mixed media papers, your watercolor papers. Drawing paper is going to be in the 70, 80 to 85 pound range. Like a sketch paper, it's going to be a better quality because it's gonna be smooth and not textured like this. It's gonna be smoother for the most part and it's going to be in that 80 pound range when you get a little higher in the mixed media paper, this is a Canson mixed media paper. I believe it is 98 pound paper. It is lovely. It is lovely, lovely. It will stand up to all kinds of things except for super wet things. So we're talking, this will handle pens and pastels and charcoals. It will handle a little bit of wetness like from a marker, but we're not talking watercolor wetness. You're just gonna find warpage. It's just, it's gonna be too much water for the fibers in this paper. Can you bind 100 pound paper? You can, you can bind anything basically into a book. However, it will be super, super bulky if you try to bind it in the traditional method of folding the paper in half and sewing it into signatures. Um, your best bet on the heavier kinds of papers, the drawing papers, the mixed media papers, the watercolor papers, this is 140 pounds of some hefty stuff, is going to be more of maybe a perfect binding, which is, this is what a perfect binding is, where it is attached at the end. It's single sheets that are just stacked together. They are all glued up at the top, even the front cover and the back cover that has now gone missing. They were all glued together up here at the top. It's not a, they call it perfect binding. Is it perfect? Well, <laughs> Yes and no. The durability will be on a couple of different things. It will be on the kind of adhesive you use and I recommend getting a padding medium that is made for perfect binding and not just using a regular white glue. You can, it just might not last as long or it might not take as much abuse as as a real padding adhesive will take. Another thing is the way that you glue your perfect binding together. If you do a method called the double fan method that gets more glue into the tops of those papers, 
it's going to hold together a lot better. Another thing that you could think about would be a spiral or ring type of binding, a cinch binding. So if you have a punch that could punch the papers and you could cinch bind them, or perhaps you have a three ring binder punch or something of the like, and you could use little individual rings to put those together. If that is your desire, then it can be done that way as well. So at this point, you're thinking, okay, I know what the different papers are. I understand that there's different kinds of paper, but then when I go to look at the paper on the end of the little label, it's, it says all kinds of crazy things. It could say text weight or cover weight or bond or pounds or basis weight, GSM or points. What is all this? And sometimes one kind of paper will have multiple kinds of measurements. So for example, a regular standard copy paper that is called a 20 pound bond weight may also be called a 55 pound text or 80 GSM. So, so what do you go by, right? So just remember this. Those that are text weight are meant for text. So those are the things that are gonna be printed on, gonna be standard copy paper, it's gonna be brochures, announcements, novels, a book that you buy at the store, you buy a book to read at the store, it's gonna have a similar weight or even thinner of this. If, you, if it says text after it, it should be great for just general writing on or printing on for resumes, that kind of thing. So cover weights are just what they imply. They are heavier, made more for covering than for putting inside a book. So you've got your card stocks from lightweight to heavyweight, index cards, or perhaps you're gonna be making greeting cards. This kind of thing is made out of these cover weights, these heavier card stocks. And of course they go from 65 to 110 pounds or more. So we can go from pretty lightweight to pretty heavyweight pretty quickly. A most common paper today is gonna to be your 20 pound. It's gonna be just that standard copy paper weight. But if you want a nicer feeling paper, a nicer writing on paper, get the 24 pound or a little higher, depending on how you feel about binding those heavier papers, because the heavier the paper, the more bulk you're going to have at the spine. When you fold those pages into signatures, it's gonna be bulkier and you're gonna need a wider spine to accommodate that bulk so keep that in mind there are converters and calculators online that you can plug in paper weights you can plug in a pound to get the gsm or vice versa i will put some helpful links below so that you can check those out if you need to do some configuring as far as that goes so i know that this was a Kind of a, maybe a boring was this boring this was a boring video <laughs> and so we're just talking about paper and what it weighs and what it what you would use it for but it's also a question that i get a lot i get a lot what kind of paper should i go get what kind of paper should i bind into my book is this too thick is this too thin what's this going to look like and it's all going to be up to you it is all personal taste and some people like a heavy textured paper. They want the tactile feel of a thick heavyweight paper. Other people want a smooth paper that their pen can glide on. And some people just want cheapo scratch paper so that they can take notes and not worry about wasting a bunch of money on, on really good paper. Maybe you want to use all these kinds of papers. 
So maybe this gave you a little bit of a primer into some of the paper that you can go look for. I suggest going out there and grabbing some paper and feeling it, fold it in half if you're gonna bind it, see how it feels to you if you wanna write on it and experiment a little bit. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this quick little video about paper and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.